Jeff is now running the project. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, stand up. Woo! Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. I, am, I started working on the game flow this morning. Uh, we, we did discuss yesterday. We talked about that we're not doing a save load. We are doing a, you get one life uh, for the demo, and uh, people will be able to replay it, and it'll be different each time. Uh, and we're going after a mode that is, is best described as, I guess, as um, energy collection. Um, of course, there's a lot more to it than that. Yeah, so uh, Lee and I were talking about how we're gonna approach the materials and if we do any blends like in the junkyard. So today I'm gonna go through all the textures that we have in our library and just bring some over to start with. I don't know, probably pretty clean and... Shiny chrome? Yeah. The desert. Let's never use the Brutal Legend glass. chrome again. No. Because, you know, one of the things about Brutal Legend chrome, it was a really particular fake thing that only looked good in certain weird lighting conditions, yeah. but every Amnesia Fortnite project somehow winds up with it and it looks like shit. <laughs> So let's not use it. <laughs> so I am building some hands. Uh, so player hands. Just found some old hands from from Once Upon a Monster. Stripping them of their fur. Yeah, stripping them. them of their fur. We basically and... shaved Elmo and are putting power gloves on. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no Elmo. It's too soon. No. Too soon on the Elmo job. <laughs> yeah, that's what we did. And uh, should have something ready to put in today. Great. First person camera can offer a lot of distortion. Yeah. You really need to kind of get it in there and, and uh, tweak based on that. Yeah. yeah, and I've never done any first person stuff, so uh, if anyone has any suggestions or ideas, just if you've worked on it. There, see if in the, this is the there. best way. Yeah. yeah. It's only way but yeah, I read through the design doc. Uh, I really want to have like an explosive body. I don't know if that makes sense in how you were talking about it, but I think that sort of like self-destructing seeking robot would be really cool to build and being able to build uh, like a lot of smaller ones that are like utility robots that are running around is, is really really sweet the scouts and the collection and the mule and like things like that will be will be super fun to just like have but yeah so I'm just gonna focus on that and hopefully I'll have a, like a, a list by uh, the 2 p.m. thing awesome guys Thanks, dudes. Um, and then the suicide hammer was the other thing. So uh, looking at the torsos, <laughs> looking at the torsos, I don't think it makes sense to have them like have abilities or things. I yeah. think that yeah, they just, arms. yeah, it just didn't, it just didn't really make any sense. Like there's a very, you know, standard kind of enemy that like seeks and gets into the melee range and then blows itself up. Like I think that that would be super fun, especially when, when you think of these things as like wind up toys that you're like setting out into the world. I think that's going to be like a, like, woo, like, I think that will be like a fun <laughs> yeah. toy to like send out there, you know? So um, if that we put it in the arm. That seek movement and move really slow. Like, I think that you absolutely have the right idea of just like, like just, you know, the simplest thing that we can do. But when you have different weapons with different ranges and different, like what if you have a tool, we're going to have to figure out what happens. Like maybe you're going to have to figure out what happens when, uh, when we like, <laughs> when you like strap all that stuff yep. together and you just like, like go. Because uh, you want the player to have an idea of what's going to happen, yep. right? Like it shouldn't be all trial and error. Oh, of course, so of course. the other thing too is it's not it's not just a combat game, right? Too. Yeah. And I really think the game's focus is a little different than that. Although we want some of that awesome stuff. Yeah, and I think I was really excited with some of the stuff we started talking about. Just like alarm systems sound like the coolest thing. It's like you know, automaton. It's just a torso and it's a head, and you give it an arm that's like an air horn, and, and it's it's you know you program it to detect movement. It's like, it did, and you're like um, the fucking things annoying. You know, I did. I did have an idea there that um, uh, audio, like loud noises, could be an input. We could easily make a category of like these are the loud things in the game, like explosions and firing and then the klaxon thing and it's like each other. They when you trigger each yeah other. right <laughs> yeah, that, i mean that's that's super awesome right and I, and I think that you know it makes you think about like the um the robots that can see versus the ones that can hear versus the ones that you yep. know taste i don't know uh <laughs> i don't know the taste stop, spot stop. taste spot 5000 but um a dirty game stop they did bring their own donuts, and there's like three left. Oh, so that sucks. I brought donuts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, White Birch, day one. Hey, crazy. Day one. Let's do it. Hey, everybody. So um, today, I think, uh, is going to be all about setting everybody's machine up, getting on the branch, getting synced up, and then I think later on today, we want to start doing some brainstorming sessions for uh, puzzles and level design. Well, I've banged up some puzzles already. Like, I have some mock-ups on my machine that we'll you look do. at in the brainstorming that look they look like they're gonna work pretty good, I think, for okay. what we want to do, so. Um, I can just make the world so that we don't have to use <coughs> an empty test room. Yeah. That's super easy. 
just make something kind of representative of what we want in there. Well, the sooner we start blocking in the world, yeah. I want to get like a basic thing to do, better. just so at least we can walk somebody in there and yeah. see. That's way too small, or way too big. Yeah. Let's get a ballpark going. Yeah. I mean, That'd that be should good. be done. Yeah, so. Right. Awesome. All right. Thanks. Thanks, guys. You start, you can either go this way or this way. If you start by going this way, you're going to get attacked by birds and die. So then you're like, I can't go that way. So then I'll go this way. And then you're like, oh, here's shutters, like open windows. If you go this way, a player's going to be like, I bet I got to close those shutters. Because it's like, it's with that same theory, like if there's a box in a room, players are just going to push the box until they yeah. can't push it anymore. So then you go through and you close these three, because this one's already shut or something. You can open and close them, but you shut them all, and then you go this way and you're like, yeah, I survived. Like, the birds didn't attack me. Yeah, yeah, right? I guess. So every time you try to walk past an open window, you'll get bugged by birds. I think if any of the windows are open, the birds will swarm you and knock you off. No, I don't think you should be that predictable. So at what point, like as you're walking down this, um, this path, when are you gonna start getting attacked? I don't know, because I think we're back to talking about this specific yeah. setting yeah. again. The first Resident Evil, there was a hallway, you walked up and down a bunch of times, and you got windows all the way, but down, boarded up windows, and after a certain amount of times, a Doberman jumped into it. Mm -hmm. I'm scared to shout. Yeah, my mom came in the room and was like, are you guys all right? And we're like, we're fine. We're just right. playing a game. So, I don't know, maybe it could be something like that. So it feels like, apart from knowing what that step is between this, and that we need to have something else. We can kind of just brainstorm some ideas right now and see if, like, like, uh, like I don't really want to do any elevatory stuff. No. Um, we could do something where, like, you know, like, you're, like, this, the puzzle would be something like, you know, like, she's, like, jumping onto, like, a pole, and now she's on this pole, and, like, you can make her fall forward onto another pole or like push left and then she'll push left onto another pole mm -hmm. and like each path that you take will end up in death except for one of the paths like maybe you could see an area and you're like should i go this one like basically think of it as like a series of like you know reminds me of uh indiana jones when he's trying to spell out Jesus. Yeah. It's like every step, you, you choose each step of the way. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, like, say you get onto this pole, and, like, if you push to this, like, right or left, then she'd, like, ah, and fall to her death. Yeah, yeah. that's really, this is going to sound weird, but that's really horizontal, and I think we need to start moving into vertical. More vertical. During the beginning of this, and, and start you getting into that going out of frame of mind for the for the completion. Well, I kind of like the idea of like her breaking things as she's like exploring this like crazy, mad capped tower. I just like old yeah. stones breaking, but like a what if there's like a a bunch of ropes dangling down, and you like be forced you to kind of hop from rope to rope, and sections of rope would break. And snap. Those like the thing about those is those that's those are a little bit kind of twitchy platformy. Yeah, they are. Which we've avoided in the past. Kind of small like combinations of small steps. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I liked about what you got right now is that it feels as if it's starting to, to become a big thing that's all one system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I, I could play with some some stuff and then we'll see what I can come up with. It shouldn't be hard for you to make yeah. that more complicated because that's kind of what you do. No pressure. <laughs> So, in the beginning of the game, uh, the outdoor area, attend and I would like for it to be very reminiscent uh, to the original NES Zelda, because the cool thing about that game is it, like, it just dropped you in there with no direction, and you kind of had to figure everything out. My post-it notes are totally awesome, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is pretty much final art, I think. Like, um, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> perfect. So when you start out the game, you're just going to be kind of in an open forest area. There's this cave entrance here. Um, that's where you go down and you talk to the wizard who gives you um, the, your laptop and kind of sets you on your quest. Um, there's a secret entrance to the castle, and there's probably just going to be like a simple block pushing puzzle um, that you need to solve in order to get there. I lost that sticky note. It's right there. That's where the secret entrance is. It's very secret. It doesn't even have a sticky note. <laughs> um, 
Um, and your quest is basically to go into the castle um, that there's uh, a friend of the wizards uh, that's currently imprisoned, um, and he wants you to meet with him and uh, uh, kind of free him. And he's going to be a, a genie, um, like uh, someone that you can like recite codes to. He's a riff on the game genie, actually. Um, and later on, once you figure that out and you figure out how the codes work, you can actually like put in whatever code you want to make uh, changes to the game state. The entrance to the library has these three exits off of them. Uh, they correspond to the three types of data files in the game. So there's the save state room. Uh, that's where all the, like, you know, your current playthrough session stuff is stored. Um, the asset room, that's just sort of, like, art assets and level files and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and the data room, which is, like, basically just more secure because that's where the scripts are and that kind of thing. The asset room has um, some of those, uh, like, Octorok-style monsters that, like, spit stuff at you um, uh, kind of in this, like, dungeon chamber. And they're shooting stuff so fast that it's very difficult to run through it. Uh, but what, one thing that you'll find laying on the ground is a code. Um, and that code you can take back to the genie. And what that does is fixes an item that allows you to slow time. Uh, and so when you have that... Uh, and it's just sort of like adjusting the world clock, so it's like you, you're slowing, you're sort of like applying a global change to the, the, the ticking rate of the game. But it could I mean, changing the speed that the game runs could circumvent a lot of the puzzles past that point. Yeah, no, I think it's one of those things where it's like once you get that Zelda item, that thing is pretty useful, like, going forward from that point. Um, and it's probably the thing where it's like you could figure out how to hack that item to make it do more interesting things than just change the speed or, like, impact how much it changes the speed or that kind of thing. Hey, check it out. Oh, you found the secret place. entrance. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, man. That's going to be a really tough puzzle. You're going to have to like go on the back side of the uh, top piece. And, yeah. Thanks, Mark. Uh, so, yeah, like yesterday, we like we gathered a whole bunch of influence, like inspiration stuff. He uh, also made a sweet ass logo. Yeah, logo yeah we made that too. logo, uh, which I'll clean up later. But I'm thinking like today, like I could like figure out the style. We were talking amongst ourselves, and we were figured out like the background would be like a nice, like rough, like painterly style, mm -hmm. and like the character which Mark's gonna be working on is gonna be like all like flat, cartoony style. Uh, but yeah, like I'm gonna try to come up with a concept today and just paint it out and see if it actually uh, what it actually is gonna look like, and uh, maybe just do some tests and go from there. So, doing stand-ups now, uh, we saw from Autonomous and White Birch, and the next team is coming in right now. So let me go grab those for you guys. Hey, Levi. Hey, Greg. How's it going, man? Good. How are you? Good. Are you excited to start working on your video game? Yeah, I just realized that I put a piece of tape on my pants that I was going to use earlier today. It is still there. <laughs> I think it's really good that we hit a scope that we all agree on today um, that's realistic. Because like, it's really exciting starting a new project because all of these new ideas come into your head, but you can also get ahead of yourself in a lot of ways, I think, um, with how much you would like to do. So uh, uh, John Swisshelm and I have been thinking of new things to incorporate into the gameplay. We'll give the feel of the game, but kind of hint at what the game can be as a full game. Systems probably mm -hmm. would be good, systems people. Um, I don't even know what that means. I'm an artist, I just say systems <laughs> and it like, what is it? <laughs> John Swisson, we want to tell them what you found upstairs when we had our, our meeting. Uh, after our meeting yesterday? Yeah, I think a great, great Black Lake omen is uh, after our meeting, I like looked down on the, the roof tiles and there were white paw prints from a cat that had walked through paint, like going off and around. I think we just got some pictures of it, it was awesome. So yeah. we followed that for a little bit and then we lost the scent. Unfortunately, my sense of smell is not there. It went for three feet and then it ran straight into a white wall. You mean Which is exactly what's gonna happen Must with have this been a game. Ghost, ghost. Cool. Um, yeah, let's get up and let's see if we can find a room. Let's get a room. So, um, today we used pretty good. I feel like the whole day has flown by, but it's been meetings with the team. So um, it was good to see um, artists in here, and we had programmers um, because they're a, a big role on um, giving us some features that we don't have yet. One of them was David Farrell, um, who was a graphics programmer. 
the other thing that he was potentially going to work on was uh, lights filtering through the canopy being projected down so you really have a feel of being underneath and um, light that would spill across a tree and then dapple the ground next to it and um, each time you're like oh we want that oh no we want that we want that oh that that would be great too and it's not a game of all of that stuff it's a game of oh crap which one you know so yeah so you just have to say this is two weeks and um, pick and choose I kind of thought about a title screen um, and when introduction would start and then um, title screen I maybe reverse the two um, and then um, a little pan across a scene to uh, our main character um, lighting up a torch and going into the forest following a little fox into the forest um, and then I did some drawings that I'm trying to show what I imagine might be a good idea for the camera, which is really tightly um, paired with uh, the idea of sensing the things around you. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something that might work, and it's something that might not work. So today I basically got it, uh, the level up and running with some elements, like some little trees and a and little guy running around. Eventually that'll be the character. So uh, it's a good indication for us to figure out things like you know, camera angles and uh, you know, general gameplay. Cool, so I would get it to like a, a general a like, you know, like angle that you like. And then, right. I mean, the camera's not going to follow you, but it's, you can yeah. move around. <laughs> yeah. Oh, crap. There it is. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Whoa. It's, holy crap, our game is done. That's it, OK. Let's go, go home. home. Let's go See, that's home. a good test. <laughs> it looks like Charlie Chaplin Michelin Man. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'll, add a, yeah. I'll add a few more trees to kind of get a general sense and maybe a good start for the place maze. Mm -hmm. A good next step is like right now it's a giant square, but um, like maybe just put some stones down around the outside so you know when the extent of the uh, playable area would be. Oh, right. right now I can't tell um, how big. Yeah where it would stop, just so we can start feeling um, how long it takes to move through. Oh, sure, yeah, like the landmarks. Yeah, good so, job, man. Awesome. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, yeah. It's moving on up from here. <laughs> cool. cool. Um, yeah, cool. I'll check it in if it doesn't destroy anything. It shouldn't destroy anything. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> can I quote you? Cool. Should we just start? Uh, yesterday, uh, we had an initial meeting, um, and we talked about a bunch of stuff. We talked about a lot of design stuff just uh, to hammer out uh, a lot of the bigger questions. We want to get to a point where we've got uh, a tile-based world drawing with the, uh, the top-down at an angle type perspective. And we've got, we can have some little people pathing around to random destinations and stuff as like the basis for our AI framework and stuff. Um, I want to get together with, uh, with all the art folks and talk about, uh, I don't know, just talk about some general art style stuff. Yeah, I like this this style of illustration. Like, I think um, NASA, the, the space program, yeah. did a lot of these kinds of illustrations in the, in the 1960s and 70s um, to kind of, I don't know, it was partly just sort of advertising for the space program because they were like, look, we're going into space and it's it's amazing and you should, uh, you should be excited. There's a lot of things that I can imagine working. I don't have a super clear direction right now. Um, if I had to go with something, like, I do like things that look, you know, painted more than, like, I, I don't think looking realistic, you know, it's a little easy for um, that kind of stuff to be really sterile and, like, kind of dry and, and maybe a little boring. So I think something that's a little weird and, uh, and colorful and imaginative, you know, uh, if you start adding this kind of thing, you know, you can go very far with it, and that's really, I don't know, I want to, that, that's one of the things that I want to talk with all the artists about. Bagel sent, just sent out some awesome uh, character paintings, which seem really cool, you know, like they're awesome little cute characters that totally fit into that style. Do you guys like that cute, cute stuff? Uh, yeah. So, like, I like the cute stuff. I just sat down something a little more realistic proportions, I don't know if yeah. you saw it. Yeah. yeah. My, my opinion is I, I don't want to go too cute, the people who are going to buy a sci-fi dwarf fortress 
aren't gonna want to play like triple town style graphics, you know? Which it's I'm just saying like there's there's a, a an extreme that's too extreme in terms yeah, yeah. of like scroll down like cute. You yeah, know? I I because I don't I think I yeah. So that's, that's <laughs> awesome. Oh yeah. That is, that is absolutely yeah, that seems really cool because yeah, like yeah. that's still cute, you know, and like it has a yeah. it, it has like yeah kind of a cartoon charm to it, but like I like that it that it minimizes the body and gets us out of like having to do complex character animation. Mm -hmm. Like we can just make limited animation part of our aesthetic, mm -hmm. you know, and it being more about like the cool shape and colors of, of, of these people. I, I don't want to do just straight pixel art type style, you know, because we have like, you guys are really good artists and, uh, and, and you're good painters. And I, I love the idea of a style that, um, that takes advantage of that. For the environments, it's a little more ambiguous, you know, and, and games will often have it's different, like the, the environments will be a little more detailed than the characters, or vice versa. Because, uh, like on one hand, there's there's the the like aesthetic style, like how how clearly it's painted, whether it's pixel art or if it's loose painting. Yeah. And then there's like design style, which is like, is it going to be 1960s like, yeah, or is it alien? Like the Amiga sci-fi stuff, like Chaos Engine slash Alien Breed, like that stuff. I was just curious, Bagel, what your take is on on like where that stuff would go. I was looking at the reference that you had on your um, on your pitch video, kind of that 50s, 60s sci-fi, you know, mm -hmm. uh, kind of you know that Battlestar Galactica vibe. Um, yeah. It's kind of like we've kind of got like a different a menu of different retro futures here, you know, because like yeah. Yeah, 50s yeah, so sci-fi, yeah, like 50, yeah, to, yeah, 50s sci-fi, like also uh, the movie, the, the much more recent movie uh, Moon, you know, yeah, which that's a good, yeah. which was which was totally cool. digging on the right combination of like 60s and 70s sci-fi, but with a modern sensibility, you know, they had like modern computers and stuff. Yeah. I think that's that's great. Like I don't remember t many of the environments from that too distinctly, but um, I just remember it being really like perfectly suited. For for the story, you know, and all that. So, and like not super dark and sinister necessarily, because that's the other, like the iconic alien corridor that's been yeah, ripped off in yeah. video games like a billion times. Yeah. But I think like not very much not with like the darkness and, you know, uh, I don't know, and the way they were shooting that. So it was all like tense mm -hmm. and scary. So I don't know. Anyway. Um, did you see that forum post I made with the tile, uh, the like tile layout thing? So this is just like a simple, block out that shows the perspective that that we're going to use I guess and the uh -huh. uh, assortment of like various bits we'll need so we can use this as a base to start painting on the edges are sloppy and stuff but it's just purely there to show uh how everything fits together yeah I'm just basically I just have a series of questions I just want to walk through them so that I can understand yeah exactly how these pieces are going to fit one of these I really like about your earlier idea about zoning is that you don't decorate, you don't say, you yeah. know, but actually right. your citizens so, are the ones yeah. who build it. Yeah. So you could put a potted plant in the power reactor even though it looks silly or right. something, I just, just I, cause. I just wonder you know. if like we could do that in a little more keeping with the spirit of indirect involvement where you could like, rather than thinking of zoning, please decorate this area. So a, a role would be what interior decorator, and then that, <laughs> that, that would be a job. Sweet, that's that anyone can do. People just have know, a tendency whatever. to do that. If we want to have anything that is a direct, it is the direct result of player expression. I think this is a good candidate for it mm -hmm. because it doesn't yeah. impact anything other than just making it look better. Yeah. Like, yeah. So it's like when you take a screenshot and you're like, "This is my weird base." Like it just creates a little bit of a weird. We're like, "Oh, you can't place guns, but you can place plants." <laughs> I want to place guns, <laughs> damn yeah, it! Yeah. Like for yeah. point. So I feel like the, yeah. it strains the metaphor a little bit. We're like, you can't interact except yeah. for it's convenient but, for but us to let you that, do things. That is like, that is true, but I think the player expression aspect of it is more important than. But it is, I just, again, I think it's like the personality thing. I think if, if what we want, if the problem we're solving is player expression, then I think we should think about a bunch of different ways to solve yeah. that and not just jump at the first one. Yeah. That's like the... Well, the, I mean, at a, at a minimum level that we would want to ship is to be able to put decorations. Yeah. yeah, like if we find ourselves later in development in a spot where... You know, the bases just look kind of barren. Like, they do have those purpose-built objects that make it a power reactor or an infirmary or something. But then we're like, yeah, there's not really much other stuff. It yeah. might be, it might actually be a good shortcut to let players directly sure. play stuff. I want to like just that, throw something yeah. in the there. Is that I actually, I don't like it in games when you're able to decorate something and then the gameplay or the AI, or it affects nothing in the game except just the appearance. So if we were, let's say, to place a plant, like, if we are to do that, like, it would be nice if, like, the... 
creates AI oxygen. is actually well, if it created oxygen, or if like the AI went in water, like something, oh, yeah, like right. some yeah, okay, or right. level of the happiness of the person in the room because it exactly, it exactly. Absolutely, like yeah. if it had some yeah. impact. Yeah. No, I, 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 I agree. That's really that's a good point. Yep. Yep. We'll see though, because like I said, I think the, the decision gate for should we add manually like player place decorations is like. How does this fit into the general like lands uh, landscape of player build players building rooms and then citizens doing other stuff? Mm -hmm. right. I think Anna's not. idea we'll see. bridges that gap a little bit, right? Yeah. Because I mean, it 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 has feet in both corners. Like right. yeah. there's there's player intention, but yeah. the result of it is after you place that one plant, yeah. the entire rest of the plant's life is is just part of the simulation now. I, I'm actually for all of those things, uh, but what I wouldn't want to see is us say. The decorations have to be built into the, the simulation, like functional to some degree, and then not do decorations because we don't have time to get it done. Oh, to make them. Soon. Oh, sure. Yeah. Right. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I would just hate to, to have time. that like fall in the, the bottom of the list. And then exactly. Because yeah. no, yeah. no the whole the whole point I, of having decorations is to is yeah, to Yeah, I agree with you. Because I think yeah. I think if our if one of the end results of this is people love love going out there and sharing mm -hmm. what their base looks like at the height of its like yeah. operational you know efficiency or whatever with all of their crazy like their scaffold shape and their decoration and everything and they're like man this is my base <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like i think that's yeah. such a big win if we, get, if we can achieve so, that uh, well yesterday we met which was awesome so uh, my focus today will be getting the infrastructure for the base off the ground so that we have some representation that anna can start working to for the ai and basic building and we'll just get off the ground from there and well. <laughs> make a whole maze i know i'm not making a maze i'm making a space base <laughs> yeah so do you uh, just extend them from existing ones, or can you make them anywhere Right now, you, the idea is that you'll start out with, like, you'll have asteroids, and those are like almost like islands. Um, and then the, the, the <coughs> blackness of space in between is like water. And then there'll sure. also be like wreckage of ships, which are like wreckage okay. of ships. So it's sort of like, and you'll, build, you'll start, you know, probably like on an asteroid, and only be able to see a portion of the map, and then build out from there. Nice. Using That's matter, your resource. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Anywho. Nice. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty nice. Good night. So long, dude. Good night. Bye.